Imagine the scene, an indigenous South American woman sees her child being attacked by one of the most powerful creatures on the continent. A jaw capable of crushing skulls approaches the defenseless child. But then, out of nowhere, another predator appears. A brutal battle begins. Claws tear through flesh, roars echo through the jungle. When it's all over, both predators lie dead on the ground. But the evidence at the scene revealed something shocking. The animal that saved that child, despite being smaller, had won the confrontation. This story may sound like legend, but it's part of a disturbing pattern of reports that have been challenging everything. We thought we knew about the hierarchy of predators in South America. And the most impressive part, science still doesn't have all the answers. In the Argentine Pampas, in the 19th century, naturalists documented something that defied all logic. They reported that when two apex predators coexisted in the same region, the smaller one not only confronted the larger one, but pursued it with impressive agility. The reports described how this lighter predator moved so rapidly around the larger opponent that it managed to completely confuse it. In many cases, it attacked from behind, causing terrible injuries. And here's the most disturbing detail. The larger animals found with deep wounds on their backs rarely survived for long. They couldn't escape new attacks. William Hudson, one of the most respected naturalists of the time, was even more direct. He wrote that it was widespread belief in the Rio de la Plata and Paraguay that this smaller feline attacked and defeated the region's largest predator. But how could this be possible? The Pampas weren't the only place where these reports appeared. In the ancient Mayan territories in Central America, stories spoke of an agile and fast predator that frequently overcame the larger predator in direct battles. Indigenous people described this animal as the true winner when the two met. An old resident of the Miranda Pantano, with decades of experience in the region, made a statement that left researchers confused. He categorically stated that, in his experience, the smaller predator frequently defeated the larger one in direct confrontations. He described this animal as extremely fast and agile, characteristics that gave it a decisive advantage in ambushes. But here's what really caught the scientists' attention. Local residents had warned him that this smaller predator was, in fact, the real threat of the region. While the larger one, despite being fierce, was considered more vulnerable in these encounters. Even in captivity, observers reported uncertainty about who would win a real confrontation between these two felines. Despite the larger one being heavier and more aggressive, the smaller one moved like a boxer, making the outcome unpredictable. Before we continue investigating this mystery, if you're enjoying this content, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next videos. And leave your like so the algorithm shows this content to more people fascinated by wild nature. We're talking about the puma, also known as mountain lion, cougar, or panther. A feline that, according to these historical reports, would be capable of challenging and even defeating the jaguar, the largest predator in the Americas. Now let's separate myth from reality. Because when we start analyzing modern scientific studies, the scenario becomes much more complex. First, we need to understand something fundamental. Both jaguars and pumas vary drastically in size depending on the region. In the Brazilian Pantanal, jaguars can weigh more than 220 pounds. In Mexico, a female may weigh only 77 to 88 pounds. With pumas it's the opposite. They tend to be larger at the northern and southern extremes of their distribution, and smaller at the equator, although this isn't an exact equation. This creates fascinating scenarios. A male jaguar can be larger than any puma, but a male puma can be larger than a female jaguar. In fact, morphological studies in southern Mexico revealed that female jaguars and male pumas have practically identical body mass. But here's where it gets interesting. Even with similar sizes, jaguars have significantly longer and more robust canines 
wider mouths, and superior bite force. These characteristics make them specialized in larger and more resistant prey, like caimans and other armored animals, even the large tapirs. So what really happens when these two predators meet in nature? Studies with camera traps and radio telemetry in various regions revealed a surprising pattern. High spatial overlap, but temporal avoidance. In other words, they use the same areas, but at different times. Researchers in Bolivia, Venezuela, and Mexico documented that, despite sharing territory, these felines adjust their activity peaks to minimize encounters. A study in the Chemlacuix Mala Reserve, in Mexico, captured three jaguars and four pumas in a stretch of just 500 meters. They were using exactly the same locations, but rarely at the same time. When recorded simultaneously, they maintained an average of more than two and a half miles apart. But what about actual confrontations? Do they happen? Yes, and this is where the story gets dark. Peter Croshaw, a pioneer in the study of jaguars, documented cases in the Pantanal. In 1982, a female puma was found dead with a fatal bite to the nape of the neck, probably the result of an attack by a pair of jaguars. Two years earlier, another female puma died after a confrontation with a predator, and the tracks indicated it was a jaguar. In Belize, photographs showed the body of a male puma with a bite mark on the skull, suggesting a fatal encounter with a jaguar. And there are reports of puma remains being found in jaguar territories, sometimes just severed limbs, clear signs that they were consumed after the fight. The Ankafari Project, one of the most respected in big cat observation, recorded a revealing moment. A puma was feeding peacefully, with a jaguar just 300 feet away. But the moment the jaguar began to roar, the puma disappeared in a matter of seconds. The researchers were clear, the puma wouldn't risk a confrontation. Studies indicate that in areas where jaguars are significantly larger and heavier, as in the Pantanal, dominance is clear. Pumas actively avoid jaguars, adjusting their movement and activity patterns. But here's the fascinating paradox. Despite this apparent dominance, studies in Jalisco, Mexico, where both felines have similar sizes, found no clear evidence of one species dominating the other. In fact, some pumas were even larger than some jaguars in the region. So what do we do with those dramatic historical reports from the Pampas and other regions? The most honest answer is, we don't know for sure. These reports come from a time when scientific documentation was limited. Naturalists like Hudson and Adzara based their observations on reports from local residents, hunters, and their own occasional experiences. A doctoral thesis conducted ethnographic interviews in the modern Pantanal and found something intriguing. 65% of interviewees still claim that the puma defeats the jaguar in direct confrontation. But when confronted with the reality that Pantanal jaguars can be twice the weight of pumas, this belief seems more cultural than factual. Crawshaw and Quigley, in their pioneering study, mentioned this local belief but countered it with evidence of pumas killed by jaguars. They concluded that, although the reports are interesting, physical evidence points in another direction. It's possible that in the 19th century Pampas, where ecological conditions were different and animal sizes varied, some confrontations resulted in puma victories. Especially considering that large male pumas could have faced smaller female jaguars. But that would be the exception, not the rule. So what's the final answer to this mystery? Scientifically speaking, there are no confirmed records of pumas killing jaguars in direct confrontation. Documented evidence consistently points to the jaguar as the dominant predator, especially in regions where it is significantly larger. But here's what makes this fascinating. Fatal encounters between these two species are surprisingly rare. Even in areas of high overlap, they seem to have developed sophisticated avoidance mechanisms. Whether through temporal segregation, adjustments in activity patterns, or simply maintaining a respectful distance from each other, this brings us to the questions I want to leave you with. 
Could a puma, even at a weight disadvantage, have any advantage over a jaguar? Could its superior speed and agility compensate for the lower bite force and muscle density? And in regions where sizes are similar, like in Mexico, could there be real equality between these two predators? Leave your opinion in the comments. Do you believe in the historical reports or do you trust only modern science? And if you've made it this far, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I've left a special video for you to watch next, a gift that I'm sure you'll love. Click on it now. And we'll see you there. Until next time.